All right, this is a weekly project number four in which uh, we're going to see the solution of the Navier's equation for the stress field around the wellbore or a circular cavity and a fracture or a, a planar and linear uh, uh, fracture. So uh, this is going to have two parts. And for two parts, we're going to see an analytical, but also a numerical solution to this problem. And you're gonna verify your numerical solution with your analytical solution. The first problem is about stresses around the wellbore. And for stresses around the wellbore, we have the Kirsch equations. The Kirsch equations let us solve what are the stresses around the wellbore in terms of cylindrical coordinates. Why in terms of cylindrical coordinates? Because it's a lot easier to solve these equations and to write these equations with the cylindrical coordinates because in cylindrical coordinates, sigma rr and sigma theta theta are going to be uh, principal stresses when they coincide with the direction of the principal stresses in the far field. Where do you find the Kirsch uh, solution? Uh, you're going to find it in my undergrad notes in uh, 6.2, section 6.2. And here you will see what all of these stresses are. You will find the meaning of sigma theta theta, sigma rr, and sigma zc. Uh, now we refer to a cylindrical coordinate uh, system. And here uh, also you'll find a physical explanation for what each of the terms are in the final equation that I have written here as equation 6.2 and applies to a vertical uh, wellbore, uh, particularly to the way the stresses are written in terms of horizontal stresses. The equations are going to be also valid for any wellbore that align with one of the principal stresses in the far field. You, you will just have to change these values of the stresses for the appropriate value. Okay, so with Kirsch equation, you're gonna be able to calculate uh, the solution of stresses as a function of R and theta at any point uh, in, in your domain. But I'm gonna also ask you to solve this uh, numerically. And the way that you're going to solve this numerically is to the final element solver free fem or if you want with a phoenix. And you will have to do this with different size domains. The objective of this is to capture what is the influence of the proximity of the boundary conditions. With the Kirsch analytical solution, what you assume in your analytical solution is that your far field is infinitely, uh, it's located at, uh, a lo at a distance which is infinitely long uh, from your wellbore. Well, this is, this is impossible in a numerical solution. So you have to find a domain size that more or less uh, approaches that condition, but you cannot put it at an infinite distance. You have to choose a domain size and you're gonna have to change that. Uh, you're gonna have to change that in order to see how your solution changes based on the domain. Uh, fortunately, you're going to see that you don't have to go too far away in your domain size in order to have a solution which is, uh, which is uh, good enough for what uh, we're trying to calculate. I'm going to talk a little more about uh, free fem in a little bit. Let me just finish with explaining what is uh, this problem uh, about. Okay, so for free fem, also you're gonna have the help of two files I uploaded in my Geomechanics uh, Jupyter repository. And, and these are the tutorial for free fem and also the base code for free fem that you're gonna have to, if you want, you're free, you, you're free to write your own if you want, but you can use this one as the, the basement in which you're going to uh, modify your own code. And, and part two is going to be very similar 
but instead of a wellbore, we're going to deal with a planar fracture. And for this uh, planar fracture, also we're going to use free fem in order to solve the stresses around the fracture and in the proximity of the tip, and also the analytical solutions for the stress intensity factor and also for the width of the fracture based on Griffith theory. And this is in my undergraduate notes in section 732, starts in 7321 uh, actually, where also you're going to see the basics about a, a pressurized uh, fracture and what you're going to have to do in uh, in the final element method is to simulate this same thing, but I recommend that you do that instead of the full domain, you take advantage of the symmetry of the problem and you just simulate half the domain. And here also you have the equations for telling you, as I was telling you before, what is the width of the fracture as predicted by linear elasticity and also what is the stress on the uh, line which extends from the fracture tip going from the tip itself uh, further away in the direction of the fracture. What is the stress in direction y or perpendicular to the fracture? That's going to allow you also to calculate uh, these stresses which are going to, by the way, tend to infinity at the tip, but uh, when you do the proper math and you will see the explanation over here, you can calculate also what is called the stress intensity factor and that's not going to be infinity. The objective is that you retrieve also these values and you compare it with your numerical solution. There is one more thing that you're gonna to have to do for the fracture and it is to export what are the stresses in, the, in a line perpendicular to the fracture. And what I mean here would be a line in direction y. So we know, for example, that at the face of the fracture, the stress has to be equal to the net pressure. I'm, I'm assuming that the stresses are zero in this domain. So if we just have a net pressure, then in order to have balance and equilibrium at the face of the fracture, the stress has to be equal to the net pressure. But as you go further away from the fracture, the influence of the fracture starts to decrease. That problem is also solved analytically by what are called the Snedon equations. And you will find those equations in this paper over here. Uh, I believe that I'm not gonna have access now since I'm not connected to the library of the of the university. But here in this paper, you're going to find that equation from Snedon and Elliott in, in 1946, uh, which is a little bit difficult. So I'm not gonna ask you to do that, but uh, to find an analytical solution, but at least get the numerical solution that is going to tell you how these stresses uh, decrease with distance. And you should get something similar to, let's see if I have it over here. Uh, I think it should be. You're gonna get something similar to this, in which you're going to see that getting uh, further away perpendicular to the plane of the fracture, you're going to see that the stress perpendicular to the plane of the fracture. In this case, the stress in the direction xx is going to decrease as uh, you get further and further away. And this is very important because it's related to what is called uh, hydraulic fracture uh, stress interaction or also called stress shadows. Okay, so this is what you have to do then for uh, project uh, number four. And I also added here, a few equations uh, that uh, are also in my notes, but here you just have the equations. In order to go through the full explanation of these equations, again, uh, go to uh, my undergraduate notes and you will see that 
uh, right there. 